House Republicans can continue to triple down on the chaos, the dysfunction, and the extremism that has been visited upon the American people as a result of the House Republican Civil War. On the other hand, traditional Republicans can break away from the extremism, partner with Democrats on an enlightened bipartisan path forward so we can end the recklessness and get back to doing the business of the American people. House of Representatives has been without a speaker for 13 days now. And during that time, they are unable to vote on legislation. So that was House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries speaking to NBC and saying that he's anticipating discussions uh, this week when lawmakers have now returned to Washington. Speaking to Politico, he said this, there are informal conversations that have been underway. When we get back to Washington tomorrow, which is today, it's important to begin to formalize those discussions. So there's a lot of speculation as to what this means. Is Hakeem Jeffries angling to become the Speaker of the House himself? A couple weeks ago, I would have called you crazy for even suggesting it, though, as every day passes, I think the prospect becomes slightly more likely. I would still be shocked if that came to pass. But this week, more likely than it was last week. Um, but the more likely speculation that people are making is that he's going to work with Republicans to install a uh, Republican as the Speaker of the House. So a little bit about what a perspective deal might look like. When asked what House Democrats might be asking for a deal with House Republicans, Jeffrey said his caucus wants Quote, to ensure that votes are taken on bills that have substantial Democratic support and substantial Republican support so that the extremists aren't able to dictate the agenda. Ah, Hakeem Jeffries never missing an opportunity to punch to the left of his party. Now a little bit more of what he had to say. The current rules of the House have facilitated a handful of Republicans being able to determine what gets voted on in the House of Representatives and that undermines the interests of the American people. We can change the rules to facilitate bipartisanship, and that should be the starting point of our conversation. So I will say this, Hakeem Jeffries is no ally to the progressives. In fact, he's an enemy of progressive values and progressive policies and progressive legislation. I do not want to see him become the Speaker of the House, and I fear for any Republican that he's going to whip votes for the Democrats in order to vote for to install as Speaker of the House. On a separate note, the Democrat the Democratic Party is so stupid. They're so stupid because every every time they do this, it's it's Charlie Brown and the Republicans are Lucy in the football. They'll make promises to you to get your votes in during this period of time because they need your votes. And as soon as the time comes for them to carry out those promises, they're going to pull that football away from the Democrats. They are not going to follow through on their promises. They are not going to deliver. So don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. They're, you know, the the Republicans in swing districts are going to take some massive hits right now. Let them take those hits. Don't make things easier for them and definitely don't get fooled by a Republican Party. And it is, again, as I said, Senator Turner, just disappointing to see someone like Hakeem Jeffries as the, the leader of the uh, minority caucus in the House, just someone who even in that moment is saying we need to prevent extremism from within his own party. It's It's absurd. This man is no ally to progressives. No, not at all. I sighed deeply. I mean, he is in the image of the person who came before him and the person before that and the person before that. So my expectation that he would be different than them, it just was not there. And I think for most progressives that remains, you know, good luck with that. Now for the, the extremists on the Republican side, good luck with that. I mean, they got a certain set of rules passed for their particular side of the aisle in terms of uh, a, a minority of folks in within the Republican House caucus to be able to run the show and they are running the show. We might not like how they run in the show, but they are running the show and they are making demands and they are they have no fear 
in the demands that they are making, right? I I wish that we had some riders and riders like that on the Democratic side. Mm-hmm. Hello, somebody. I mean, I really, really do. Riders for what is right, just and good. What we got in the Republican caucus is riders for just chaos and foolishness and mayhem. That's what we see happening. But imagine if we had just a few, especially in that progressive caucus, who is ready to rock power like that. Okay, we'd be a lot better off. As far as them not being able to get anything done, I question what they were getting. Getting done in the first place for the American people. If this had been any other job, Ray, I mean, I can't wait to hear our commenters. Had it been any other uh, place of employment, these these people would be fired. Try not to call them clowns because, again, I don't mm-hmm. want to disrespect the clowns. I like clowns actually, but they would be fired because they can't even do they got one job and they can't even do that job. You can't even pass a budget. We got continuing resolutions. We back in the mess again and would have been there again even if McCarthy was still at the helm. So my question becomes all, of, all to what end are we uh propping up or helping to preserve? What are we preserving? What types of bills will pass? Will it be the types of bills that give relief to the American people and will it be not? Most likely it's not going to be anything that's going to give real relief to the American people. So while I do recognize, let me bring it back. I do recognize that that body needs to function and in order to to just function, right? We ain't even talking about passing anything spectacular. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about functioning. In order to function, they need a speaker of the house. I get that. So that's a given. But much beyond that, I have no faith in the Republicans or the Democrats when it comes to delivering material conditions or policies that change material conditions for the people that we care about in this country. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point, especially given that Hakeem Jeffries, when he's holding, uh, he has the ability to, to spin things really positively for the Democratic Party because the Republicans are doing everything they can to. I believe it was uh, even Senator Lindsey Graham who described it as them shooting themselves in the foot. So he's got an opportunity to uh, do some really good politicking. And instead he goes on TV and says, we need to pass what we can bipartisanly uh, instead of attacking the Republicans for being a disaster right now. I mean, and what does that mean? It means that nothing, like you said, that is actually going to benefit the American people no. is going to pass because he's, as I said, punching the left of his party, you know, and he's explicitly said he doesn't support things like Medicare for all. No, doesn't. <laughs> and Ray, I'm just one, just one more point. I'm glad you brought up bipartisanship. American people, bipartisanship doesn't always mean good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just gotta put that out there. So when each party talking about what they've done bipartisanly, we gotta redefine print. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's never good, but what I want our viewers to understand that just because you have a politician mouthing off about bipartisanship does not always means that substance of what was passed was good. <laughs> Especially when it's the uh, the corporate interests that have captured both the Republicans and the Democrats that brings them is. together to pass things that benefit corporations generally to the detriment of the American people. Thank you for saying that because I'm sick and tired of bipartisanship being portrayed as as the epitome of of positive positivity in the House in the Senate. It is absolutely almost always not the case. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.